Typhlosion is this month's Community Day Pokemon, and it has now been confirmed to get Blast Burn as its special Community Day charge move. Blast Burn is the same move that Charizard got for its Community Day. All Fire-type Pokemon that are Starter-type Pokemon can learn Blast Burn in the main series games, so there is potential for Blaziken and Infernape and everything else to get it as well. Well, because an analysis on Typhlosion itself is pretty one-note, I decided to look at all the different Fire-type, Starter-type Pokemon with Blast Burn in Pokemon Go. So up ahead, live stream swag tips clip, I cover that information. And to spice this information up even further, I decided to look at all Pokemon that are fire type from Gen 1 all the way to Gen 7 using their translated stats from the main series games into Pokemon Go, slapping on move sets that they can learn using moves that we currently have in Pokemon Go. So if you're curious about Every single fire type Pokemon from now until the end of time. Up ahead, clip from Swag Tips, cover just that. This is the Registeel raid. It says all fire type Pokemon. Obviously, this isn't all fire type Pokemon. It's just ones that stand out to me. And then there's also a couple Pokemon that aren't fire types on here, right? But yeah, so it's uh, level 40 counters against the Metal Claw Flash Cannon Registeel raid with best friendship and no dodging. And uh, you'll notice that there are some non fire types on there, uh, included Machamp. Salamence and Groudon, just as some frames of reference. Uh, since this is a steel fight, the fire type Pokemon will be in direct competition with, you know, the strongest fighting type Pokemon and the strongest ground type Pokemon, so it's good to think about them that way. And then Salamence has that Fire Fang Fire Blast moveset, so I'm always kind of curious to see where Salamence ends up in raids where it gets effectiveness off of that. Definitely not a good fire type. You really want that stab bonus going on. So on this graph, you'll see that there are starter type Pokemon listed twice. You know, you got Blaziken here and then you got Blaziken BB and that'd be Blaziken with the Blast Burn, right? So we don't have Blast Burn Blaziken or Blast Burn Infernape yet, but we do know what Blast Burn looks like and we do know what their stats are and they are in the game. So presumably in like, what, 2025, we should get all these guys. So good to think about them now as far as like our investments go in the game. And then I also included Heatran. Heatran's not out yet, but it's a Gen 4 Pokemon. We're in Gen 4. We got its Game Master information, so Heatran is here. Glancing at this graph, you can see right away that our next Community Day Pokemon this weekend is Typhlosion. And Typhlosion, not looking so great. Yeah, its Blast Burn moveset only puts it on the level of an Overheat Charizard. And Overheat Charizard is like nobody uses that right just as good as you know kind of meh and then you got flareon up here and flareon's an extremely common basic fire type pokemon actually i'm kind of curious how flareon got up so high in this particular raid maybe it's getting a fire spin break point i don't know yeah so probably a break point happening at best friendship for flareon usually blast burn charizard is a bit ahead of flareon in the past i did a similar analysis to this um in preparation for heatran coming out this was pre-gen 4 so i looked at overheat heatran as well as fire blast heatran and on that graph we we're using i think uh ultra friendship maybe against the red ice raid so the stats were a little bit different. So some of the Pokemon were positioned a little bit differently. So it's always, you know, good to keep in mind that breakpoints and stuff like that can influence, you know, the performance based on situation. At any rate, Typhlosion with Blasphere, not really looking that impressive. Kind of a, a overall meh Pokemon. To make up for that, we do have the doubled up Catch Stardust, and then we also have the other doubled up Catch Stardust event. So there's some doubled up overlap. Uh, we're assuming that it's gonna stack, so 4x car catch Stardust for Typhlosion Day, so pretty cool there. You can also see over here that Heatran, a little bit more DPS than Entei, but it's got this distinction under it, you know, like an arrow, and it says 11.17 TDO. Yeah, the TDO, which is the x-axis here, goes up to 7.5, I mean, I guess technically eight, if you think about it. But yeah, so Heatran kinda off the charts in terms of its tankiness, so in order to like not warp the graph, just so we could have like a bunch of white space, and then at the end of that, Heatran and looking like a boss. Decided to uh, highlight it a little bit and make sure to let you guys know that a little bit more tanky, actually a lot more tanky than what it looks like, you know, on the graph right here in position. It's like, it's like way out at the end of my computer screen here where that guy would end up. So yeah, really tanky Pokemon. Fire Blast was kind of lame because with overheat, then its DPS would be on like the level of Moltres and its TDO would be insane. Really tanky Pokemon, really cool investment. But in the current state of the game, Moltres, definitely the best fire type. If you're holding out for anything, you're probably holding out for the Blast Burn Blaziken. So 
kind of how that goes. You know, Typhlosion with Blast Burn, kind of uninspiring, and I'm looking at these fire types so closely anyways. I figured it'd be fun to look at future Pokemon. So future starter types with and without Blast Burn, and then future generation fire type Pokemon in general. Because Pokemon Go just uses stats from the main series games, but like translated into Pokemon Go terms, we do know what their stats will look like, and then we also know what moves they can possibly learn. So we can also like cherry pick some, put them on them, and then run simulations on how they compare to the current Pokemon we have. So yeah, so I did just that. So this is the same Registeel raid, best friendship, same move set on the Registeel. But yeah, so this is using all fire type Pokemon. And I think for some of the generations, I'm just not gonna try because five and six like are just blurred in my mind and the last time I did this kind of content I kept messing it up so future Pokemon right yeah so future Pokemon on this graph that we currently don't have in the game pretty exciting ones are definitely the Volcarona pretty cool it's a it, like I, I think the way Volcarona looks and the Troze it has man like I was hoping it had some of the white fluff but yeah it's just a big giant moth monster a moth of flames and it's a pretty exciting Pokemon uh, in the main series games it has this attack called quiver dance which would increase its speed and its special attack and its special defense so if you wouldn't like take care of it right away it would just become this giant unstoppable fire bug monster and in pokemon go its attack stat and its defenses are still pretty boss so if it were to receive overheat or if i don't know pokemon go brought in some other good fire type moves and it got it quite possibly be the greatest fire type pokemon in the game uh, right here, this is Fire Spin with Overheat, so Volcarona looking really great here. Uh, didn't expect any less from it. In fact, when I first did this graph, I forgot about Volcarona, and then when I was putting it together, I was like, wait, where's Volcarona? Shouldn't it be, like, crazy good? And yeah, it is. Better than Moltres, all right? So if there's anything to save your dust and candy for a fire type for, I'd say Volcarona is definitely it. Uh, and yeah, you'll see that there are two Pokemon here, two Darmanitans. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. Let's see. Darmanitan. Okay, if I mess that up, then there's some weird inflection there. But yeah, so Darmanitan in the main series games has two forms. It, I don't know, it might be like a HP-based thing where if you fall under like 50% HP or something, then it transforms from one mode to another. Or I think maybe they're like two separate Pokemon, but then if you do something special, then it makes them separate. I think it's the HP thing. At any rate, in Pokemon Go, I don't know what they're gonna do with it. They might just make it two separate Pokemon. And yeah, so the Zen form is kind of like it's like a sleep form, you know? But because of the translated stats, you know, it's like massive defenses and it's still pretty okay attack. Just kind of makes it look way more impressive than its base form or like its awakened form. So the, the Zen form, definitely looking pretty cool there. Very tanky. Of course, these are all with like overheat, so they might not get overheat, which is kind of a big problem with the fire type lottery in general because you got that one charge move that you're hoping you get. And if you get, I don't know, Fire Blast instead, like Heatran did, then you kind of look a lot less cool. Yeah, I think even Heatran got Fire Blast as well. It got Fire Blast and Fire Punch. So that definitely hurts Heat, uh, Heatran while wow, Megmordar. Yeah, Megmordar here. Yeah, he got Fire Blast and Fire Punch. So the simulations I'm using are with Fire Blast on him because that's what his actual move is. If Megmordar were to have gotten Overheat, it'd probably be more on the level of like, an improved Flareon. Also, one Pokemon you might not be too familiar with, even people that are, I guess, uh, are somewhat veteran to the main series games, Volcanion. And I, I almost forgot about Volcanion myself. It is a fire water type Pokemon. I don't know if it's mythic or legendary. I, I'm pretty sure it's mythic. But yeah, it's just like a really weird guy in the files of like i think the gen 6 games but then they like waited forever to give us access to it so it was like a maybe pokemon kind of thing but volcanion is real especially by this point it's in the tcg even fire water type pokemon looking at its moves it only had hidden power i think as like a fire type fast move that it could get in pokemon go so I gave it Rock Smash here. So yeah, I have no idea what they'll do with Volcanion. It's definitely one of those things, the bridge that we'll cross when we get to it. But yeah, no, looking pretty tanky, especially in the Registeel fight because it's a fire water type Pokemon. So you get the double resistance to the steel type attacks. Unlike Heatran, it doesn't have some stupid, crazy, tanky TDO mastery going on. Yeah, it's only like 8.5-ish total damage output and an even worse DPS than the Heatran. And this guy's got overheat. So it's like, man, rip the Volcanion. Uh, we also have Chandelure. I think that's like the only other one that really stands out from all the fire types that I added from future generations. But yeah, Chandelure also looking pretty cool. Fire Spin Overheat Pokemon. It's a ghost fire type Pokemon. Does anyone fulfilling a ghost fire type niche? 
Probably Chandelure, probably not Typhlosion. Yeah, pretty pretty cool for Chandelure up here, being a DPS boss. Delphox and Embor, or Emboar, and then we got uh, Incineroar. Incineroar's got some swag with it, it's in the new Smash game. Not looking too good in Pokemon Go as a fire type. I never really thought about it as a dark type in Pokemon Go, so maybe in the future, if I do some sort of dark type analysis, I could look at Incineroar that way. But yeah, as a fire type, Blast Burn with Fire Spin, not looking so cool. As far as fire types go with Blast Burn, it looks like uh, Blaziken, you know, Embor and Delphox are like the big ones to look out for as far as starters go. Infernape, not so cool. And then, yeah, Typhlosion, not doing so well. So sorry about that. Typhlosion, at least you got 4X Catch Stardust to make your day a little bit more special, right? Incineroar, Get smash. But yeah, so these are uh, the fire types I decided to take a look at. Before I even thought about doing this kind of analysis, uh, my buddy in the Game Press team, Bioweapon, did an analysis. Uh, you can check out the article on Game Press too. It's uh, starter types, the starter Pokemon and their exclusive moves, an analysis. Issue with that analysis is I'm pretty sure like the legendary Pokemon don't have the 9% tax applied to them. And then it also includes Mega Pokemon. And Mega Pokemon are kind of like, I don't know, a really big issue. I've mentioned this before in other live streams where I've talked about future Pokemon, but like a lot of Megas are like outperforming legendaries by a lot. So I don't know how Pokemon Go is gonna do Mega Evolutions. I'm suspecting that we might get Megas in the next couple of months because the Let's Go series have Megas. So if we're able to play the Let's Go games and do Mega Evolutions there, well then, us as Pokemon Go players are probably going to be like looking at Niantic like, Hey man, why can't I Mega Evolve my Charizard? You know, I want to have the Ultra Mega Charizard with the blue flames and stuff. Give it to me, daddy. But yeah, but their stats are like crazy good in Pokemon Go. Make them better than legendary Pokemon. So I'm kind of like iffy about talking about them because I don't want to like... The hype of them, the power of them just blows everything else out of the water. So it's like, oh yeah, prepare for the future that might not look like this because it's like a special kind of weird thing. So I clipped out a part from Bioweapons article on it and yeah so you can see here this is like the comprehensive dps tdo spreadsheet that he had featured for fire type pokemon and in it you can see that there is blacephalon and reshiram i'm more than positive that this reshiram doesn't have the nine percent tax applied to it it's got like what 4500 cp or something like that when it's unnerfed so i didn't take the time to what multiply by 0.9 or 0.1 or whatever to translate this stats all in or whatever. I could have done that, but laziness on my side, right? But yeah, Reshiram, probably gonna be pretty good. If you look at it, this is its like, you know, unnerfed stats. As a fire type in general, it's got high TDO and high DPS. If these stats were nerfed, I imagine that its DPS would still be higher than Blasper and Blaziken, and its TDO would very likely be higher than Blasper and Blaziken. I think we could assume that Reshiram would be on like a higher level, um, probably the upper right corner type Pokemon here. Could possibly be better than Volcarona. And also on here you got Blacephalon, which is an Ultra Beast. And yeah, it doesn't look too crazy in comprehensive DPS TDO, but when I did it for the Registeel graph, it was like it was like insane. Like it was like um, like two DPS higher than everything else. And so I was like, okay, I'm not gonna warp the graph for this Gen 7 Digimon type Pokemon here, right? And then yeah, and then you can see the Megas are just like on a whole nother level compared to everything else. You know, Mega Blaziken and Mega Charizard Y. The gap between them and then this legendary Pokemon, and this is without the 9% tax applied to Reshiram. Unnerfed, you know, unhinged Reshiram is like 19 DPS, and then Mega Blaziken has like 22.7 DPS. Pretty crazy, pretty crazy. So yeah, I'd say in the right now, Typhlosion, not so crazy. If there's anything to hold out for in the near future, it'd be for the Blast and Blaziken. And then in the future, we've got a ton of really great fire type Pokemon coming in in Gen 5 and 6. So it might be better to just, you know, maybe hold out for them. And then on top of that, you know, you got the Heatran. And Heatran's like the mega god tank, even up to Gen 7. Heatran with its like stacked resistances and everything just makes it way more tanky than everything else. So I think as a pure fire type Pokemon to invest in, I'd look more towards Heatran right now in the game. So that was a clip from my live stream Swag Tips. Swag Tips streams every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time on the Twitch channel Swag Tips. If you like this content and you wanna see more like it, well then make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. I know that roughly 20% of you watch me all the time and haven't subscribed to me yet. So I think today's the day guys, I think today's the day.
swag tips. You know what's even crazier? So of the 20% of people that watch me all the time but aren't subbed to me yet, around 10% of them actually type in swag tips into the YouTube search bar to find my videos. They do that and they're not subscribed to me. I don't get it guys. Subscribing, much easier than, than searching me. I mean, of course, there's people that are subbed to me um, like that do that too. So weird, right? But uh, yeah, yeah, subscribe. Come on, man.